It's not going to change us from being LGBT, it's not going to change us from being gay, it's not going to stop us from speaking out, it's not going to stop us from showing our faces. Harassment and attacks against gays in Africa have surged over the past decade. Same-sex acts are illegal in 31 sub-Saharan countries. Actual enforcement varies widely, and the punishment ranges from years in prison to the death penalty. In South Africa, however, gay marriage and same-sex adoption are legal, and countries such as Mozambique and Botswana have outlawed forms of discrimination based on sexual orientation. LGBT is an initialism that stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender, and used since 1990s. The initialism, as well as some of its common variants, functions as an umbrella term for certain sexualities and gender identities. The term LGBT is an adoption of the initialism LGB, which began to replace the term gay in reference to the broader LGBT community beginning in the mid to late 1980s. Over the course of its history, the LGBT community has adopted certain symbols for self-identification to demonstrate unity pride, shared values, and alliance to one another. The symbols communicate ideas, concepts, and identity both within their communities and to mainstream culture. Ready for this conversation. <laughs> you're, you, you're going to be on the edge of your seats. In today's show, we want to break down and understand more about these alphabets. LGBTQ plus plus and plus. plus. And another plus. And another plus. And of course, the pluses will never end. The LGBT community has adopted certain symbols for self-identification to demonstrate unity, pride, shared values, and allegiance to one another. LGBT symbols communicate ideas, concepts, and identity both within their communities and to mainstream culture. The two most recognized international LGBT symbols are the pink triangle and the rainbow flag. Gilbert Baker designed the rainbow pride flag for the 1978 San Francisco Gay Freedom Day celebration. He designed the flag as a symbol of hope and liberation, and an alternative to the symbolism of the pink triangle. The flag does not depict an actual rainbow. Rather, the colors of the rainbow are displayed as horizontal stripes, with red at the top and violet at the bottom. It represents the diversity of gays and lesbians around the world. In the original eight-color version, Pink stood for sexuality, red for life, orange for healing, yellow for the sun, green for nature, turquoise for art, indigo for harmony, and violet for spirit. A copy of the original 20 by 30 foot, 8 color flag was remade by Baker in 2000 and was installed in the Castro district in San Francisco. San Bonan, Babugele Makai. Ikamala Muandile Kukuletu. Ndombia kwa kundu mashaba and a very warm welcome to the alternative view. As always, this show is about changing the narrative, changing all negative perspectives into positive. It is about giving the platform to voice out your own thoughts and opinions without any criticism nor judgment. But before we get into the topic for today, let us quickly take a look and recap from last week's episode. These are two different things. South Africa is an ally of Russia. Now, the second question is, where does South Africa stand on the war? It says I'm a non-aligned in relation to war, but Russia remains South Africa's friend. Thank you so much for showing so much support. Now we got your answers and a lot of negative and positive comments um, we have received from you. 65% was in agreement with President Putin to attend this year's BRICS annual meeting as they did say despite his wrongdoings. South Africa and Russia have a good relationship, especially when it comes to economy for both countries. They are a helping hand of each other's country. 
and 35% of the public had a different perspective about last week's episode and disagreed. They were in favor with President Putin to be arrested as he was putting children in danger and had no solution and none whatsoever to fix what he has caused. We have comments coming from the public and the first one it is from Twitter and it's from um, Oandile underscore and he says this mission was all about giving arms to the Ukraine via Poland. Sometime later, we are going to hear these arms have been um, confiscated by the Polish government. They are reporting this just to show Russia and BRICS that South Africa is aligned with the West. And the last one is coming from Chi, um, Chidangai, rather, and it says which South Africans BRICS is coming to South Africa and there is no one who's going to take it elsewhere. Now today's topic is very interesting and sensitive though to a lot of individuals and even those who aren't a part of it. The LGBTQ plus community in Uganda. Before we go much in depth about the topic for safety purposes and comfort, this program only aims to foster a safe environment for individuals of diverse sexual orientations, gender identities and gender expressions by promoting education, awareness and empowerment, striving to create a society that respects and values the rights of every individual, irrespective of their sexual orientation or gender identity. After the break, we go much deep into the topic of the LGBTQ plus community. Please do not go anywhere. Dial of Technology now introduces an innovative and convenient way to receive medical assistance. The Plus 263 Health app is a virtual medical care platform with a comprehensive network for doctors, specialists, hospitals and pharmacies to interact a lot easier with patients in the comfort of their home. To access the app, you can download it on Google Play Store or Apple Store, create your own account online, search for a verified doctor and choose to visit or consult any doctor via video call or WhatsApp to give out details on your prescription for just a minimum consultation fee. That way you can go to any pharmacy near you for your pickup, creating a better world with Plus 263 Health app. As you can see as an example, this is a live patient consulting a real doctor. For more information, visit the website at www.plus263health.com. Stop waiting on queues for long hours and move from difficult to easy life with Plus 263 Health app. Making health more affordable for every Zimbabwean because your health is our health too. Jet TV, just in time. Hello everybody, Happy Sitole here. Let's fellowship together every Sunday on your gospel show, Oasis, on channel 417. Remember, entertainment is our game. For he is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or even imagine. Jet TV, just in time. Now, Uganda's president, Yoweri Museveni, has signed a bill criminalizing a safe, um, a same sex conduct on the 29th of May 2023, including potentially the death penalty for those that convicted of ag aggravated homosexuality into law. The Anti Homosexuality Act of 2023 violates multiple fundamental rights guaranteed under Uganda's constitution and breaks commitment made by the government, as well as a signatory to a number of international human human rights agreement. Life in prison, even the death penalty for being gay? In Uganda tonight, that's reality after President Yoweri Museveni signed one of the world's most draconian anti-gay laws, <laughs> triggering an international backlash, threats of punishment from the US, and fears of other African nations following Uganda into an LGBT crackdown. This is not where I would like to be. This Ugandan LGBT activist had to flee their country, now living in exile. You are arresting us for literally doing nothing, for simply existing. 
you know. But where are we supposed to go? How did we become refugees in our own countries? The new law punishes gay sex with a life sentence for the crime of promoting homosexuality 20 years. It was watered down from an earlier version that criminalized merely identifying as LGBTQ. But this version imposes even harsher penalties for what it calls aggravated homosexuality, same-sex relations involving children, people with HIV, or other vulnerable people. When you commit aggravated homosexuality, the law says you shall be liable to suffer death. Museveni, kill the bell. Across the globe, outrage. President Biden calling it shameful. The U.S. saying it will directly impede American aid to Uganda, including in fighting HIV AIDS. The enactment of Uganda's Anti-Homosexuality uh, Act is a tragic violation uh, of human rights, of universal human rights. Even Republican Senator Ted Cruz, not known as a champion of LGBT rights, calling it grotesque, an abomination while Secretary of State Antony Blinken threatens visa bans on Ugandan officials. But in Uganda, the law's chief backer brushing off U.S. threats. Let all of us be subjected. In fact, let all Ugandans be denied visas to America, Canada, and, and, and the European Union. As Ugandan lawyers challenge the law in constitutional court, other African nations may follow Uganda's example. Already, 32 of Africa's 54 nations criminalize homosexuality. Those countries make up nearly half of the 67 countries globally where being gay is a crime. In Kenya, Tanzania, and Ghana, there are campaigns underway to replicate the new Ugandan law. We are delighted to know that Uganda has been able to set the pace. It's a good thing that other countries are also taking up this issue. Now, Uganda's penal code already punishes same-sex conduct with life imprisonment, a criminal offense that is rarely prosecuted by the new law creates new crimes such as promotions of homosexuality and introduces the death penalty for several acts considered as aggravated homosexuality and also increases the prison sentence for attempted same-sex conduct to 10 years. This is John Ice to the president of Uganda and got the public wondering why this is an underlying issue for the country whereas other countries have already legalized marriage of a same sex or rather have, have accepted this whole LGBTQ community. So it's not something that you should discuss to be seen to be what? No, no, no. no. You only talk because you are sure of what you are saying. Otherwise keep quiet. Don't add to the confusion. There is enough, enough confusion already. Now, when we are discussing the issue of homosexuality, in the last 200 years, in this part of the world, Ankore, Chigezi, Buganda, Bunyoro, Karagwe, Tanzania, so, but it was a small number. Five, I have had five names in the last 200 years. Because me, I'm from this area here. I'm, <laughs> my clan is one of the oldest in this part of the world. Now, when this issue, at that time, of course, this was a private issue. People were not fight. they were not encouraging it, but also they were not they were not fighting it because it was like hidden, small secret of some few people. The problem with the Europeans is that they they tomera, they bring things which are out of place. That suspicion of merely being being suspected, being suspected to be cannot be criminalized, cannot and should not be criminalized because it says he is like a sick person. If somebody is sick, do you criminalize him for that? Now, I'm glad when they went back, apparently they, they cured this. This was what was cured. The problem is that, yes, you are, you are disoriented. You have got a, a, a problem to yourself. Now, don't try to recruit others now. If you try to recruit people
people into a disorientation, then we, we go for you. We punish you. That's number one. But, but secondly, if you violently grab some children and you rape them and so on, we kill you. Uh -huh. And that one I totally support and I will support. The, 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 the three positions. Number one, merely being suspected of being is not an offense in itself. You are a person to be helped if you want if you can be if you want helped. Because it was it was said that some of the people can be helped to go to, to get back to normal. But secondly, if you want now to disorient others, uh uh we go for you, we punish you by, by imprisonment. If you go beyond that and you start raping children and so on, we kill you. In the United States, same-sex marriage had been legal in 37 out of 50 U.S. states plus the District of Columbia prior to the 2015 ruling. In 2017, Germany became the fifth European country to allow same-sex couples to wed. In Africa, we have Angola who discriminalized same-sex relationships after passing a new law that came into effect in February 2021, followed by Botswana, Mozambique, Lesotho, Republic of Seychelles, and South Africa. South Africa's highest court ruled the country's marriage laws violated the Constitution's guarantee rather, of equal rights. Parliament legalized same-sex marriage still in 2006. Uh, but of course, like you say, mm. you know, it's not recognized, it's not allowed. Mm. Uh, well, legally that is. Yeah. I mean, it's all good and well that you can get married and customarily, but yeah. uh, whether the law would recognize is a different story. You know, you find that people get married customarily uh, where there's exchange of gifts, gifts as mm. opposed to lobola payment. But uh, can, can you go to court, can you get a, go to home affairs and say you want mm. your mm. Uh, marriage certificate issued? I highly doubt you can. Mm. So what needs to happen? So what needs to happen is that more and more people need to get married customarily so that uh, someone, someone, in fact, someone needs to go to court and say, look, I want to get married customarily and I want uh, to, to be recognized on that basis. Now, exemptions were also included in the new marriage law. Both religious institutions and civil officers could refuse to conduct same-sex marriage ceremonies. Now, the move of President of Uganda immediately drew condemnation from many Ugandans as well as widespread international outrage. The UK government said it was appealed by the deeply discriminatory bill which is said will damage Uganda's international reputation as it is in diplomatic relations with America, Asia, Europe and Oceania. Uganda is a member of the United Nations and the Commonwealth of Nations since 1962. Now US President Joe Biden described the act as shameful and tragic violation of universal human rights. Released just minutes ago from President Biden, it says in part, this shameful act is the latest development in an alarming trend of human rights abuses and corruption in Uganda. The dangers posed by this democratic backsliding are a threat to everyone residing in Uganda, including U.S. government personnel. He said Washington was considering sanctions and a restriction of entry into the United States against anyone involved in serious human rights abuses. A suggestion that Ugandan officials may face repercussions. Watch this video as students from 13 universities in Uganda protest against that of uh, President Joe Biden saying that he might impose sanctions on the country for their anti-LGBTQ legislation. <laughs>
So as reported by reporter Simon Ateba, he said the students were saying, we don't want your pro-gay money. We want and love our country more than money. Now at a shelter for lesbian women in Uganda's capital, Gambala, gone are those days where the residents, having fled abuse and stigma at home, could breathe easy and be themselves. Now that came to end a month ago when the parliament passed the anti-LGBTQ legislation. Stuff at the shelter, a non-discreet building in a busy part of town, now instruct residents to be discreet and blend into their surroundings, even if it means changing their behavior or physical appearance. LGBTQ Ugandans say nothing could have prepared them for the past few weeks after the passing of the legislation as the bill's passage um, sent homophobic abuse into overdrive, unleashing of arrest and evictions. LGBTQ plus people in Uganda increasingly fear for their safety and security and people are being discouraged from seeking vital health services of fear of attack, punishment and further marginalization. It is a receipt for systematic violations of the rights of LGBT people and the wider population. To the break, we are going to give you much more of the not nice part of the topic. Please do not move. Now that we're in the UK, I just don't know how I'm going to afford the funeral policy. The prices are just too expensive. Zororo Pumlani, an authorized financial service provider. Introducing Zororo Pumlani Worldwide Funeral Plan. Zororo Pumlani Worldwide Funeral Plan is always there to cover you and your loved ones. The funeral cover that covers you and your loved ones no matter where you are in the world, be it the UK, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, Sororo Pumlani Worldwide Funeral Plan is always there to cover you. Because saying goodbye shouldn't cost a fortune. Sororo Pumlani, an authorized financial service provider. Jet TV, just in time. We equally reject attempts to prescribe new rights that are contrary to our values, norms, traditions, and beliefs. We are not gays. Cooperation and respect for each other will advance the cause of human rights worldwide. Confrontation, vilification, and double standards will not. Mr. President, self-determination and independence are intrinsic and fundamental rights that should be enjoyed by all peoples everywhere without distinction. Beware the beast man, for he is the devil's pawn. Alone among God's primates, he kills for sport, or lust, or greed. Yea, he will murder his brother to possess his brother's land. Let him not breed in great numbers, for he will make a desert of his home and yours. Shun him. Drive him back into his jungle lair, for he is the harbinger of death. Not everyone was in agreement with the LGBTQ plus community as it was said by the public. The United States imposes um, the LGBTQ plus community. Because you have to understand in the tactic of the art of war, when you want to destroy a stronger enemy, you have to get rid of the, the cultural perspective of uh, authority. The sense of control of population to them as they do know crystal clear that same gender cannot bear children despite other alternatives such as surrogacy, donor insemination, intrauterine, adoption and fostering. And the ways and means for the head or the authority of that family to become and stay the authority 
and the head of that family, and that is to be the provider and the protector. Take away his means of providing. Take away his means of protecting his family, and he no longer has any rights or any kind of uh, power. So when you have done that, you have now undermined the glue that keeps a family together. Men don't have to be men anymore. So what's the best thing to do? Since you're giving so many favors to women, I might as well be a woman or at least act like one, and therefore I'm no longer, as Dr. Francis Crest said, I'm no longer a threat. If whites are involved in their genetic survival and they are threatened by black male masculinity, then it will occur, I have to reduce his masculinity. Yeah, we just recently had the president at Morehouse have to say the male students cannot wear high heel shoes and dresses and carry purses. So something is happening again within the total context of a system of racism and white supremacy. The United States imposes the LGBTQ plus community as it is for their control population as they do know crystal clear that same gender cannot bear children despite the other alternatives that they do have. Now, Uganda military size for 2019 was 46,000, a zero increase from 2018. Weaponing gay rights, giving sanctions to countries who don't support gay people. And as African people, we have succumbed to Western beliefs instead of ours. The issue with black people is this. We hate who we are and love who we can be. We hate who we are, Africans, and love who we can be, Europeans. We do not want anybody to remind us of who we are, which is why we shun Africa. We are trying to get out of who we are. And we think that if we act white enough and marry white enough and dye our hair white enough, then maybe white folks will start treating us like white folks. You are an African. White people have never forgotten it, no matter how much you try to, and you will always be treated like an African. It doesn't matter how many doctors you got. It doesn't matter how light you are. It doesn't matter if your wife is white. You can ask Tiger Woods about that. You will still be treated like a black person. On the question of human rights, on the question, for example, of same-sex rights, never mind same-sex marriage or anything like that that might be in the future, for want of a better word, gay rights, the overturning of laws against homosexuality. Can you promise me today that you will do that? Cut, I'm a constitutionalist. The current provision in the Constitution forbids same-sex marriages and uphold it until that issue in our country is not an issue of the political party. Not same-sex marriage. I'm talking about same-sex. Same-sex relationships. Never mind. We can put marriage to self. I'm talking about same sexual activity. In our current Constitution, it is banned. Are you going to lead a campaign no, I will not lead the campaign. Why not? Those people who want that are the people who must uh, canvass for such things so that if they are able to win majority in amending the Constitution, they would amend it. But it's not my duty on that uh, issue to say I want to campaign for this. No. Of course it is. Your, with respect, Mr. President, of course it's your duty. It's your duty to, 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 to uphold human rights as recognized by the United Nations and as it recognized by the It is my countries. duty. It's my duty to obey my constitution. Correct. I would not be persuaded to violate my constitution. Currently, my constitution says what I have said. But the constitution does not forbid people with different opinions. They must converse with the opinions which they have. So I'm asking for your opinion, both as a man and as president. Are you in favor of changing the constitution on that issue? No, I am not. It's never a priority in Zimbabwe to deal with that issue. During 2013, when everybody was able to converse, those who conversed for that position lost. We go by the majority view of our people. And currently, the majority view is what I am stating. So you keep Zimbabwe in a different age, in an, never mind same-sex marriage, but in an age when the European Union, the United States, Australia recently uh, enacted same-sex marriage, and pretty much 
of no, pretty much I, your country I, I don't is, think that, is in a uh, very small minority. My, I don't think with my priorities today, I would grow my economy, right? Uh, 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 increase the standard of life of my people. Putting that as a priority. Our priority now of my government is to embrace the international community and uh, say Zimbabwe is open for business. Let uh, uh, people who want to invest in Zimbabwe say this is what they want. These are the constraints they see. And this is what I believe is necessary for us to grow, to catch up with some of the developing countries in our world, One more in our this. region. One more on this. I, would, I, I venture to disagree with you, Mr. President. It is, that's democratic. Surely, by changing, whether it's on women's rights, gay rights, whatever rights it is, human rights, surely by changing those, you really send the true message that you're not just interested in money coming in for dollars, for business, but creating an equal environment for all. Surely that's a much more powerful message than just asking for a bit of extra foreign direct investment. It's not a question of having dollars in Zimbabwe. It's a question of development. We must have functional railway systems in my country. We must have functional uh, infrastructure in terms of uh, highways and so on. We must have functional manufacturing sector in the country, I must modernize and mechanize my agriculture in Zimbabwe. I must have a developed uh, mining sector in Zimbabwe. These are the things, as far as I'm concerned, are the issues which my people look at for government to address and uh, uh, facilitate for their development. In conclusion, Embracing is committing to creating a world where LGBTQ plus individuals can live authentically, free from discrimination and prejudice. Through our comprehensive program, we aspire to foster understanding, provide support and empower individuals to embrace their true selves. Together, let us please celebrate diversity, promote inclusivity and build a society where everyone is valued and respected regardless of their sexual orientation or gender identity. But however, it is not in our power to impose anyone nor any country to sideline their culture and tradition. Please do make sure to comment and catch us to all our social media um, handles. On Twitter, it's at JIT-Entertainment. Instagram, it's JIT-TV underscore ZW. And on Facebook, we are JIT-TVZW. Or rather, you can reach us to our website at www.JIT-TV.TV to stream and watch all your favorite shows. But for now, that is all from me to you. Hope to see you again next week, same time, same place. Nisalin Gash.